Well, this is strange, but okay. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm in a little bit of a different spot today because my bookshelves are curing. If you missed my last videos, uh, I am doing a massive bookshelf makeover. I'm looking at it right now and I'm just like so happy for it. But now is the hard part. I have to wait. I have to wait before I put all of these books on those shelves. So while I'm waiting, I figured I would do this video. If you saw the title, this is going to be the 15 books that define my taste. I saw Jessica from Peace Love Books do this um, and a lot of others on Instagram, but I saw she did the video, so I'll tag her. But I just thought this was a good idea and I thought, let's just do it. <laughs> so let me get into the 15 books that define my taste. The first book I want to talk about is Daughter of the Pirate King. This is one of my all-time favorite books and it definitely defines my taste in books. I would say this is a YA action adventure romance um, with pirates, <laughs> which is basically all my catnip. Uh, I really love this. The heroine in here is very snarky and strong and she owes the captain of her ship and everything. And then the guy as well is also very charming and sweet but also just kind of taken with her so there's a lot of adventure in this and again the pirate vibes are there they're very very strong there so this is definitely definitely at the top of my list as one of the books that just define what i like in books book number two is actually a whole damn series and that is the mead mishap series from kimberly lemming why i'm adding these books to this list is because there is a lot of humor and a lot of hijinks but all wrapped up in this kind of sweet kind of cozy setting in this you have a spice farmer named cinnamon and she absolutely does not want to be the hero but she's kind of reluctantly brought in to be the hero <laughs> when she rescues a dragon shifter named fallon and um he kind of pulls her into him saving his people so <laughs> They go on an adventure together. There's some fun, spicy times in this, but the humor is there quite prominently. And it's definitely a more blunt, sarcastic type of humor as well, which I gravitate towards. And then the hijinks, there's just like bonkers hijinks all the time. The third book specifically is one of my favorites of all time now because it has the most bonkers hijinks in it. And it just, I just love them. Another one that I would say falls into my brand of humor and unhingedness <laughs> is Just Like Magic by Sarah Hogel. I love all of Sarah Hogel's books. Again, this is another author that I think is like my soulmate where like her writing and my humor just go together like, like peanut butter and jelly. And I just love it. Um, Just Like Magic is probably the most unhinged Christmas story that I've ever heard of. You have Hal, which is the spirit of Christmas, trying to bring the spirit of Christmas into Beatrix, I think her name is. I can't remember. I can never remember heroine's names. So I'm just, I'm just going to put that out there right now. <laughs> Even my favorite books of all time, I forget the names. But Hal is this incredibly sweet, he is everything you would think Christmas is. He just has that light spirit and she is very dark <laughs> and macabre. And those two things together, I absolutely love. I love when you take complete opposites and jam them all together into a romance and they try to figure out each other's quirks, but they also play with each other. Like the things she requests Hal to do, is insane. I definitely think this book is just my brand of personality. Like I love in books when things surprise me. Um, I just love like you, you literally punched me in the face with some zany scheme and I just absolutely love that. <laughs> Another book that I think totally is my brand is Butcher and Blackbird. Uh, this book again just has that sort of mashup of these incredibly dark themes but all wrapped up into this really sweet rom-com. 
this book is about serial killers killing serial killers. I mean, it's very dark and then they both fall in love with each other. And it's just, there's one scene where it's literally like Texas Chainsaw Massacre behind them, but yet they're having this adorably sweet moment where they embrace and kiss for the first time. And it's just, it's squishy and adorable and I love it. My cat is going insane right now. <laughs> what he, he has the zoomies, great, great. <laughs> And the last two books on the lighter side of my brand is No Getting Over You and Mating with the Mantis. Again, Mating with that Mantis is just like top tier level unhinged, but like wrote in a very Shakespearean way. <laughs> it's so bad, it's good. Again, I love the juxtaposition of like something being so bad that it ends up being great. <laughs> it makes me laugh. Um, it makes me feel something and I love that again no getting ogre you is about an ogre who's just lonely and there's this huge action scene in it that I really love but he meets a human he doesn't know what to do with her there's a language barrier so he feeds her rocks and he doesn't understand that she doesn't eat that food because she's a human and he's never met a human before and I love when also like two people from different worlds collide like that and they just kind of work through their differences a little bit in a sweet way Way. I'm not always like a super sweet mushy cushy monster romance person but when you mix that up with this this underlying feeling of loneliness or like not fitting in like match made in heaven match made in heaven now we do have a non silly funny side to me of course <laughs> and I want to also say one book that defines my taste is Near the Bone. Near the Bone is actually a thriller, it's not a romance. And it's the type of thriller that I really gravitate to, which is this isolated snowy mountain cabin in the middle of nowhere. And you have a girl that was actually taken as a young child and groomed by a monster of a man. And, um, he ends up marrying her and she's just clearly, clearly it's a bad situation. And while they're out hunting one day, they encounter three hikers looking for like a Yeti type monster and they kind of rescue her. But while they're on this mountain, she's being hunted by more than one monster. There's actually another monster out here. And there's this whole ominous feeling of her like, when you read this book, you feel her feet walking through the snow. You know what I mean? You feel, she gets injured and you feel her pain through it. And this kept me gripped. It absolutely, I love these type of thrillers that actually just really make you feel the isolation, the loneliness, the pain, those kind of things. I know, I know it's weird for me to say that because I have anxiety and I don't like things to be too like anxious feeling when it's slow and done right, I love it. Another one, while we're talking about a slow and done right, The City of Brass, um, the whole David Bond trilogy really, is another one that really defines my taste. In this, you have an epic adventure. Like, I absolutely love an epic adventure where you have a girl from Cairo who is a thief and she, you know, rubs a lamp and a genie comes out and he takes her back to his own land. And then she just has to navigate not only the changing landscape, the monsters along the way, but also the politics between that world that she knows nothing about. And this whole trilogy, again, I have anxiety and every single book gave me anxiety and triggered my anxiety the entire time but I loved it. I absolutely loved it to the point where this is the type of the book where I'd read a chapter and I'd have to just sit there and think about it because it was just so gripping and it was so amazing. I absolutely love this trilogy and it's one of my favorites and y'all should read it if you haven't. Um, it's not a romance, it's an adult fantasy, but there's like a romantic element throughout it um, that I th think is a very small subplot. So I, maybe that's why I loved it too. But um, mostly I just loved the epic adventure around it. That book also had something that I really love, which is multi-POV. And another book that has multi-POVs that I absolutely loved is The Last Magician. This whole series as well. I need to read the last book still. It has a lot of POVs in it. Um, but mainly you are following two magicians. Um, and it's in like 
there's time travel in this so it's kind of hard to say what happens in it but basically you follow two magicians and there's like this big bubble around new york city and magicians specifically cannot leave their bubble however two people can or at least one person can and that is the hero and the heroine of the story um this has like almost like gangs in it like new york gangs type of thing there's time travel throughout the series um there's a lot of magic happening i wouldn't i don't know if i would call it magical realism but i guess so but oh, it's just it's so so good this is a i think it's a ya series but i would say upper ya but um, I just love the fact that you get into the perspective of many different characters and not just the hero and heroine, especially when you're talking about a fantasy, any big epic fantasy. I love just the different perspectives in it. Another epic adventure, but make it dark and spicy. Well, we'll say like dark-ish and spicy. <laughs> A Ship of Bones and Teeth is definitely my brand of personality. Not only is this pirates, okay, pirates, but <laughs> um, there is also this magical side of it with this being a dark kind of Little Mermaid retelling. Uh, the Little Mermaid, she made her wish with the sea. Oh, my legs are already hurting from sitting on the floor. Great. Uh, Ariel in this, which her name is not Ariel, her name is Marin. Uh, Marion made her wish to the sea goddess, got it, married the prince. However, after 10 years of abuse from this prince, she wants out. She wants to go back home. And in order to do that, she needs to team up with a pirate. This does have one of my favorite things, which is a microtrope in fantasy. I can't say what it is because it is a spoiler, but I will say when this happens, I'm just like, yes, yes. Everything about this book is visual. It's again, high adventure, high fun, high steam. Everything about this is monstrous in a way. And I really love that as well. I'm gonna say a lot of pirate books are on here because I just love pirates, but this one also involves spies. And this is a brand new old time favorite, which is Any Duke in the Storm by Amelie Howard. The heroine here is actually a spy, but she's undercover as a pirate. And boy, is she a badass. She is the baddest pirate ever. And I absolutely loved it. I love a good, strong, fierce heroine. Also, this heroine is um, very fluid with her sexuality and she's not like this virginal character in historical romance like you would usually get. But she also is just snappy with the hero and the hero takes it. Like he matches her like move for move. Um, in this one, again, epic adventure, high seas action in this, but also like going from port to port doing things as well. Uh, I just really love that kind of like almost road trip aspect of books. Those are, I love road trip things in books. One horse, one bed, those kind of things. Uh, forced proximity. This has it all. It's like a fantasy wrapped in a historical romance. And it's great. Back to the lighter side, but again, kind of not as well. Like there's dark moments in this, but they're like playfully done. I have to talk about the Make Game series. Not only is this one of my newer favorite brands, which is Y Choose. I love Y Choose. <laughs> but you have a girl who needs to save the world by getting with all these men. Please. <laughs> And all the men in this are different, which is why I like this Why Choose the most. They all have their different personalities. Two are vampires, but one is a daddy priest and he's Irish. That's great. Um, there's, a, there's like a demigod in this. And then what's the other one? A werewolf, a werewolf. So you have, and they all have their own personalities, but also the men have a relationship with each other. Um, not always a sexual one, just like a friendship, like a bromance, if you will. And it just like the audiobook too. This is the level of audiobook that I want for all books. <laughs> I know that's a high bar because you can't have this dual narration audiobook every time, but this is done so stunningly well that it just keeps you entertained and engaged the entire time. And this is a four book series. Like, this is a four book series. And when I want to binge a four book series, which never happens, I never binge a series, uh, you know it's good.
another series that I am absolutely feral for the next book right now is The Crown of Oaths and Curses. You have heard me talk a lot about this book lately because it needs it, okay? You're talking about two people from opposite sides of the world who absolutely hate each other. However, they're fated mates. So they kind of have this underlying tension the whole time. And I would say I don't normally subscribe to a slow burn. I am not a slow burn person, okay? I don't necessarily want things happening on the first page, but I want like an adequate amount of burn here. And this is sometimes a little too slow for me. However, in this book, this book, it works because that tension is there from page one. So <laughs> you have a girl who is a witch and she knows her fate. She knows she is fated to marry this fae prince. But the fae prince knows when he's going to meet his fate, but he doesn't know who she is. So when he arrives and notices that she is a witch, his mortal enemy, he is like, no, no, I'm going to marry you, but I'm going to lock you up in a dungeon forever. And that's okay because it saves, like this fate is supposed to save my kingdom. He doesn't want to touch her. He calls her an it. But when the first time he touches her at all in this entire book, which is towards the end, he wants to kill her, but also he is, there's such a charge together. That is what makes a good slow burn. That is what makes a great slow burn, I would even say. And I absolutely love this book. I cannot wait for the next one. It's coming out next month. And yes, when you know a book is making me want to read the next book immediately, you know it's a good series. Two books left. Um, the first one I want to talk about is Foundry Side. This again is not a romance. This is an adult fantasy and it's surrounding this magical world where the heroine can speak to objects. And in this object, you mainly deal with a key. And the key is snarky. <laughs> this has a very, very new and intricate magic system in it where she can talk to objects and convince them to do her bidding. Also in this book is one thing I absolutely love, which is a heist. I love a good heist. I love a good multi-character heist with strong side characters, which is what the key is. And um, the key is almost a whole other person. <laughs> it's like a human trapped in a key. I'm pretty sure it was a key. I've read this a long time ago, but I still remember a lot of it. The heroine also is just kind of fumbling her way through this. She's a good thief, but she, this is like a whole new thing to her and she has to pull this off too. Like, and she has to pull off this heist and she doesn't know how she's gonna do it, but with the help of this key, they somehow get through. <laughs> Things go to shit. But in here, why I really like this book is that you have, again, unexpected things. Like the way the key works is that it basically talks to a lock and convinces the lock to do things that it wouldn't normally do. <laughs> so it's just really kind of cool. And I really loved this whole series. So that's why I put it on my list. And the last book that I would say defines my taste is a sci-fi romance. I actually really love sci-fi stories, um, specifically sci-fi romance stories. And this one I would consider a space opera sci-fi romance. Now, I don't always normally like alien romances, so I didn't put any on this list, but I do love some adventures in space where humans are interacting maybe with aliens and figuring out their way through it. In this book, the heroine Temperance, um, her captain ran off with the intern. So she is kind of <laughs> thrown into the captain role and trying to keep her ramshackle spaceship with the, her crew of misfits together. So they end up taking a job from a wealthy family, which is like in this book, there's different wealthy families that kind of like control the planets, like entire planets. And in this one, she's tasked with a job to go on a scouting mission. And in the scouting mission, she also has to take um, <laughs> the wealthy owner's son with her. And of course, those two butt heads the entire time. And through the scouting mission, they encounter these, of course, um, shooting matches. They're like, pew, 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 pew. You know, if, listen, this book was so much action. Okay. <laughs> And I absolutely loved it. This was exactly the space opera romance that I was looking for. And it, again, high action, high romance, spicy bits, all of the things that I would want in a sci-fi romance. So 
I'm adding it to the list because it's totally on brand for me. So there you go. Those are the 15 books that define my taste. Let me know if you like any of these books or maybe you like all of them and we just became new best friends. <laughs> As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.